hello welcome to the channel if you're new here and if you're not new here welcome back feel free to subscribe and like and, and do the other youtube -y things i've been working hard lately trying to get some stuff to you and today i figured why not let's have a little discussion about the oscars uh i'm not really one to get super hyped up about the oscars but it does offer some interesting opportunities to talk about different movies released in the past year or so. And since I talk about animation quite a bit here on the channel, I figured why not talk about the nominees for Best Animated Feature this time around. Uh, there are only five total, really not that many. And when I got the idea, I had already seen four of the five nominees. So it wasn't that much work to watch the remaining movie on the list, which was Flea. <laughs> I'll get to Flea. That's a whole other kettle of chips. Instead of reviewing each of these, I'm really just going to be talking about each of them very briefly from the incredibly cynical perspective of what kind of chances they have of winning the Oscar in this category. It is a, I don't know, I definitely do have a cynical outlook on this. I just don't put all that much stock <laughs> in the stuff that wins the Oscar, and I don't always have faith that, you know, the winner will happen to be something that, that best represents that category, whatever that category happens to be. Um, but regardless, we have five movies here that overall uh, are all of a certain level of quality, certainly. They're all highly professional. They are, almost all of them, very high-profile releases. And as usual, for better or worse, a good chunk of these are from Disney slash Pixar. Three of the five are Disney slash Pixar movies. That's just how it goes. They win quite a bit, don't they? These movies from this giant uh, studio conglomerate thing. Okay, but you know what? Let's let's just go ahead and get started. I'll run through each of them, and then at the end, I'll kind of give my impressions. I'll predict, just for funsies, I'll predict which one I think will probably win the Oscar, and then I will also maybe just pick my favorite of the five for this category, on a personal level. Uh, the nominees, I guess I should list them off, they are in contact Luca, Flea, uh, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Okay, so we're gonna get things started with Encanto. Now, in terms of, like, <laughs> the Oscar voting itself, I feel like Encanto has quite a few advantages here. For one thing, it released relatively recently, meaning it will probably be closer to top of mind for many people who happen to be voting here. It's not something that released so long ago that they may have forgotten about it. In terms of um, FYC advertising here around town, that can sometimes be a gauge for how likely a movie will be to, to win an Oscar or more than one Oscar. I haven't seen a ton for Encanto. I've seen a bit here and there. In terms of the nominees, in fact, here, Mitchells versus the Machines has been doing quite a bit of advertising, Billboard specifically, more so than any of the other nominees in this category, so that's interesting. But anyway, Encanto was huge. Encanto is definitely mainstream enough to have a large amount of name recognition among the, the <laughs> voting members of the Academy. It had a massive, massive hit song that is still high up on various charts, especially streaming charts. And in terms of the messaging, I mean, I made a whole video about this movie, but like the, the messaging is certainly just progressive enough for maybe some some of the old heads to be like, oh yeah, that's like an important movie that says important things about mental health. I'm not saying it doesn't. I definitely don't think it's all that progressive ultimately, especially here in 2022 or even in its year of release, 2021. Regardless, I, I think it does have that edge of like, oh, I'm a voting member. We want the Academy to look like we're supporting, you know, progressive messaging, progressive movies, and <laughs> uh, ethnic representation that is non-white White, in a very cynical sense, and Kanto has a lot going for it. And in terms of like actual value, I mean, just specifically the animation, as I said in my video on the movie, it's a very good looking movie. It's it's very pretty. Lighting is lovely. Fun environment designs, very, very colorful, very saturated. There's a lot to like here, and it's not really challenging at all. It's just a fun, easy watch. It's very accessible right there on Disney+. Plus. Everybody's kids are going to be saying, oh, Encanto was so cool. Let's, you know, vote for that one. That's that. That's Encanto. If you want to hear me talk about the movie some more on a completely different level, go ahead and watch my video. It's somewhere else on the internet. I trust you can find it. Okay. Luca, remember this one. <laughs> This is the trouble with Luca. I forgot about Luca. You probably forgot about Luca. If you ever watched it in the first place, this released, what, like, early last 
summer. And it is a Pixar movie. It's very high quality in terms of animation. Again, it's it's very pretty to look at. Uh, it's a pretty lean runtime. Again, it's, it's certainly not challenging. It's a family movie. It's easy to accept. However, in terms of like messaging <laughs> and perceived wokeness of a movie like Luca, I think it was flying a little bit too low under the radar. It takes a little bit of searching around to see what it's really trying to say, at least in my opinion. And I feel like in this case, talking about the Oscar race and stuff, that is to the movie's detriment. Ultimately, eh? It's Luca. <laughs> it's Luca. I'm having a hard time rustling up any strong feelings about the movie, and I have a hunch that lots of other people have similar feelings about it. And that's that's really all I have to say about that one. Okay, Flea, the heavy one. This has been a criticism of the animated feature category of the Oscars for many years, almost since the category was first created, is that it doesn't really make sense. The, the only real qualification, you know, I mean, outside of votes, obviously, but like, it just has to be an animated movie. There is no accounting for genre, tone, audience, uh, country of origin, anything. If it's just an animated movie that gets enough votes to be nominated, it's there. And on the one hand, that's interesting and kind of cool because almost anything, even weird experimental anima animated movies have a chance of getting nominated. Uh, very famously, Anomalisa, the crazy Charlie Kaufman, insane, surreal, existential movie was in the same category as all the Disney Pixar movies of that year. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it makes more sense to have that uh, very few limitations on the, the animated short films because of course you're gonna get variety, no matter what, even within just like Pixar something. They do a, a massive variety of short films in terms of subject matter, tone, and even target audience. And you also have room for international shorts there. It's it's wonderful, but for the animated category, this is a prime example here. We have Flea. If you don't know Flea, it's definitely the, the, the least marketed movie of all of our nominees here. It is a technically a documentary, an animated documentary, although it also incorporates plenty of live action footage. And it's about a man who had to flee from Afghanistan in the late 80s, early 90s. I don't think they gave us an exact year. But anyway, uh, his really just horrific and miserable struggle alongside his family. They initially flee to Moscow, and then from there, they're like, this, is, this isn't this is going to work. This is a miserable life. We can't stay here. We now need to find somewhere else to go, and they, they each try to get out a few at a time to other countries in Europe, and it's just miserable. It is absolutely miserable. That's not a bad thing, obviously. I'm, I'm very happy that the story is being told. It's incredibly well done in terms of just documentary filmmaking. It's one of my favorite things where you just have these really long-form interviews with a subject, and then you animate from that. So here, obviously, they don't have footage of a lot of the stories that he's telling. That would be insane. So they animate it. It's a good movie. If you have the opportunity, please check it out. It did extremely well at all the film festivals. I'm sure it won a bunch of stuff there. It's It's been critically lauded of course it's that kind of movie from the get-go and it also just happens to be very well executed but there is no chance there is basically no chance that this is going to win in the category of Best Animated Feature. And the good news here is that Flea has also been nominated for Best International Feature and one other category, maybe Best Picture, I'll have to check on that, but another category. So it has a good chance of getting an Oscar in general, but in the animated category, I do not think it's going to get it. Just specifically because, I mean, apart from the fact that Disney Pixar tends to dominate alongside the other major studios, family movies always dominate, and people are familiar with those movies. The people voting on this stuff have heard of those movies at the very least. Sure, they probably got screeners for Flea and they sat on the kitchen counter for a few weeks and got buried by a bunch of other stuff. And that that was it. That's the end of the story. I don't think it's going to win here at all. I kind of hope to be surprised. That would be, that would be kind of neat. Hey, I'd like to be wrong in this case. That would be very interesting. But here's the nail in the coffin as far as I'm concerned, because we are talking about animated features. In my opinion, and I guess this is a bit of a clue into how I feel about the movie overall, the animation is by far 
the weakest link. <laughs> Editing and the, the interviews and everything and how it's all stitched together, excellent. The story is incredible and, and depressing and also sort of inspiring by the end, but still very sad. And especially, oh my God, in the context of, of war in Ukraine, it becomes even more miserable. But even so, I kind of hated the animation of this primarily animated movie. And I understand that saying anything negative about this movie probably makes me seem like a monster, but but honestly, I just, it doesn't scream excellence in animation. It screams very pragmatic animation. It's very functional animation. Even, you know, framing is great. Uh, colors being used, very nice but like, ew, just movement. There's very few frames of movement on any character. Character designs are incredibly bland. I just don't, I just, from many different angles, I don't think it's happening for this movie. It is a good movie, please check it out. But we're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on because the last two nominees are what you would expect, right? We have Mitchells versus the Machines from Sony, and we have Raya and the Last Dragon. Okay, so Mitchells vs. the Machines, I made a video about that a million years ago, and coming back to a, a, an issue that I mentioned earlier, this just released so early in the year, as did Raya and the Last Dragon, that like, I'm worried that a lot of people just forgot about it, period. But it's here, it's here, and I'm glad it's here. I mean, visually, it's fantastic. And if we're really just looking at this category from the perspective of, oh, what was some really great animation that was released in 2021. Mitchells vs. the Machines is there 100%. It's a really cool look. It feels very contemporary. It feels forward leaning in terms of how the visuals are executed. The energy is fantastic. But then again, and this was one of my critiques of it, of course, was just that the story was ultimately very uninteresting. It's something we've seen many times before. The messaging is pretty standard, I guess. The messaging is, is very, very familiar to anybody who's watched a bunch of family movies animated stuff for kids. I don't, I don't think it's enough. It could be. It could be. This one does have a decent chance, ultimately, but mm -mm -mm, it was so long ago. It was so long ago. It was meant to release in 2020. Maybe it would have had a better shot there. Well, no, Soul. Soul kind of had it on lockdown, even though I didn't like that one either. Okay, moving on to the last one, Raya and the Last Dragon. Hey, there's another one I made a video about and which has been the subject of discourse, let's say for a while now and I'm not crazy about it I mean a very bare bones view of the movie is just that it's a pretty mediocre adventure quest kind of story it pays lip service to its supposed cultural influences I don't think they are very prominent ultimately it, it does end up feeling just like a Disney movie. <laughs> and that's probably to its detriment. Again, yeah, I mean, we do have our non-white ethnic representation here. Cool, thumbs up, all right. But it might take more than that these days to get all the awards and stuff. At least I hope so. So I, I don't think it's gonna be it. Okay, so in terms of my pick of what's most likely to win, it's probably gonna be Encanto. I wouldn't put money on it because I don't have any money. But I feel like Encanto is the most likely by a pretty decent margin. And now in terms of my, like, just <laughs> the movie that I would like to win, hmm, that's tricky because none of these are, like, my favorite movies of uh, last year or just my recent viewing. As I said before, Flea is excellent. As a movie, the animation is really not my thing on an intense level. Luca passed by, I forgot about it. Encanto's fine. It might be Mitchell's versus the Machines. Just in terms of my personal preference and really focusing on the animation element here, that would probably be my pick. I just think it's it's different. It's different. It's slightly new. That is one of the things that I most value in, in animation and, and movies in general and especially movies from, from massive studios that don't tend to be super innovative. So who knows? But there you go. I, this, these are my thoughts. <laughs> these are my thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride with me. And as always, this is a wonderful opportunity for discussion and argument. So uh, go ahead. Give me your thoughts. Give me your feelings. Yell at me if you think that I'm wrong. And give me your picks and all that kind of stuff. And did you manage to watch Flea? How did it make you feel? <laughs> Were you able to do anything for the rest of the day after watching that movie? Because me? Not so much. I think that's about it. Thanks for stopping by.